Hi friends, welcome to my channel. My name is Juan, I'm a yarn addict, hence the name Juan the Yarn Addict, and I want to thank each and every one of you guys for stopping by to check out my video today. This is a yarn and crochet channel where we talk about all things yarn and all things crochet, so if that interests you, please consider subscribing to my channel if you haven't already. Hit the like button, and then of course hit that notification bell to stay updated with everything regarding me and my channel. Today, my friends, we're having a podcast. We're going to be talking about all the things. And if you're coming across my channel for the first time, or if you haven't seen one of my podcasts before, my friend, you're in for a treat. We talk about all the things here. All the things is a thing. <laughs> it's a thing, I promise. So let me go ahead and give you a rundown of today's podcast, and then we'll get started. So first, we're going to talk coffee. My friends, it's my favorite drink. We're going to talk about that and the details around this cup of coffee. Next, we're going to talk about my newly launched cow. Uh, other words, crochet along. So I launched a cow yesterday and I want to talk about the details around that and all the things around that. Okay. Next, I want to talk yarns. I have some new to me yarns that, um, yeah, I was enabled friends. Juan, the yarn enabler was enabled and man, let me tell you, I went onto that website and I ordered some yarn and I am so thankful that I did. To me, being enabled is a very positive thing. I love being enabled. Show me the deals, show me the steals, or show me something that I haven't seen yet, and I'm all in. So that happened, and we're going to talk about that. And finally, we're going to be talking Happy Mail. So I have some Happy Mail here that I want to share with you guys. I'm excited um, to share that with you. So let's talk coffee, my friends. So coffee is my favorite drink. If you haven't seen the last podcast, I did share that with everyone for the first time. Coffee is my favorite drink. Diet Coke is number two. And water is number three. In that order. <laughs> so I am diabetic, so I drink sugar-free coffee. But I do put um, equal in my coffee, a sugar substitute. I try to limit that as much as I can. But yes, Dunkin' Donuts ground coffee is my favorite coffee in the whole wide world. I go to Walmart once a week. After I pick up my skein of yarn, I circle back around into the grocery side of the Walmart and I make sure to pick up my Dunkin' Donuts coffee and then my caramel macchiato uh, creamer, sugar-free of course. And it's a must, it's a staple in my house, I have to have it. So my friends, here's the cup of coffee. I have a cup in the morning and I have a cup after work. I literally got home from work about 30 minutes ago made a pot of coffee, and here we are. So, uh, excuse me, I needed a sip. Okay, so with this, um, I want to share that there's a link on my channel. It's buymeacoffee.com. Um, I leave that there for anybody who wants to buy me coffee. So it fuels my coffee addiction, but then also it helps um, facilitate the cost of my Sunday giveaways. Um, I love the engagement with uh, the crowd that comes to see me on Sundays, and I like to give back to the crochet community. Um, I give, I give, you know, yarns, uh, mystery boxes, you know, things like that. And the money that I get from cups of coffee help pay for the shipping. So, yeah, with that comes the opportunity to leave me comments. And what I do is, is if you buy me a cup of coffee, um, I put it on my list and I share your comment with everyone on the YouTube streets. So it's just a way of me showing my appreciation for the time that you took out of your day to buy me a cup of coffee. So today I'm going to read three. I try to keep it at three. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and read this first one here. Um, the first one here comes from Angela. Angela writes, hello, I just found your channel and I love all your videos and all your energy. You make my day when I can watch you. Thanks for all you do. Well, listen, Angela, thank you. I mean, words like this are huge, huge heaps of encouragement for content creators such as myself. I mean, I'm still fairly new um, to the YouTube streets. I've been received with open arms basically from everyone who's been watching me, and I'm very grateful and humbled by that. But also, too, that comes with a sense of insecurity. Like, am I being received well? 
you know, are people enjoying what they see? So when I read comments like this, it really lifts up my spirits and it puts me in a great place. So thank you so much for the comment, Angela. It means the world knowing that people like you enjoy what you see. So thanks again. Um, let's see. The next one comes from, let's see, Cynthia. So Cynthia writes, from one yarn addict to another, I love your videos. Keep it up. <laughs> well, thank you so much, Cynthia. That is amazing. I love it when people are self-professed yarn addicts. I mean, because honestly, if you're watching me and you see all the things and we talk about this and we talk about that and you're enjoying it as much as me, you're a yarn addict. And there's nothing wrong with that. You love buying yarn. You love crocheting. You love knitting. You love all the things. You're a yarn addict, and it's okay. So I love that. Thank you so much for the coffee, Cynthia. I really appreciate that. Okay, so the next one here, let's see. I have a list of comments here, and I'm just randomly choosing. Um, let's see. Mm -mm -mm -mm. Okay, so this next one here is from Tina. So Tina writes, enjoy your caramel macchiato. You're a joy to watch. Well, thank you so much, Tina. My caramel macchiato creamer is amazing, as it always is. Hold on. Mm. Amazing. Love that. For me, for you, for us, it keeps me energized. It gives me all the things. <laughs> so thank you so much, Tina. I really appreciate your comment. Guys, the link is on my channel. If you're ever interested in buying this Gen X person a cup of coffee, feel free to do that. Leave me a comment. Um, it means the world to me knowing that you're there and you, you know, you're acknowledging my presence and yeah. So thank you guys so much for the cups of coffee. So that's it for the coffee talk for today. Next, I want to talk about my crochet along. So yesterday, um, depending on when you're watching this, uh, January the 9th, 2024, I launched my very first crochet along. It's something I've always wanted to do. Even before I started a channel, I've always wanted to be able to teach others what my aunt and my grandmother taught me. And so I just thought, this is the perfect way to do that. And, you know, while I may be working out the kinks and I may not be perfect at it, I'm super excited to share this experience with you guys because, listen, it's my first one and it definitely will never be my last one. So, yeah. This crochet along has two parts, as I previously mentioned in other videos. We have one where we're going to build a blanket together, and that's really for those who don't really care to do the squares. And then I have a squares cow uh, crochet along for those who really do like to work with, you know, the squares and they don't really care to have a big Ophi blanket all across, you know, while they're working their projects and things. So I kept it very versatile. Um, but I have been receiving feedback from many people um, saying, Juan, I want to do both. Well, by all means, do both. More power to you. I love the fact that you're watching my cow, getting all the things, and enjoying your time. So, yeah, I, I definitely appreciate that. So, week two um, will roll out January the 16th. So, I do want to talk about this week one rollout, though. So... I'm not sure if many of you guys are aware, but the eastern coast of the United States faced a huge storm yesterday, which was the day that I was supposed to roll out my cow, which I did, by the way. I did roll it out on time, although it was very, very, very late. Um, my power went out here for six hours, and the only power I had was the power on my cell phone. So... Um, prior to the power outage, I was recording the actual cow because as I told you guys, my cows are recorded live. Um, there's no pre-planning here. So wherever my viewers are at, it's exactly where I'm at. And I'm doing it that way because it's my way of engaging with you guys. We're doing it together. We're a team. There's no pre-planning here. It's a mystery. I have no idea what's being rolled on the, the wheel any more than you guys do. But anyway, I'm recording the video, and I don't know if you guys can hear it, but if you go back and you play the video for the crochet alongs, both of them, actually, um, you'll hear 
the rain. I mean, it was coming down and the wind was so hard. Um, for me in my house, uh, when I left the house this morning to go to work, I'm walking down the driveway to my car and all across my front lawn, I see um, roof shingles peppered all throughout my front lawn. And I just stood there, I'm like, what does a person do? Like, how often does one see this? I mean, it's the first time that I'm seeing it. I'm like, um, I have roof shingles that belong on my roof all over my front lawn. <laughs> so, yeah, that was the extent of our storm. So I'm walking across the lawn, picking up the shingles from my roof, and I'm looking at my roof, and I just, I'm in disbelief, like... This is what happened last night while I was recording my cow. So I walk to the other end of my house. Mind you, I have a, a ranch house. It's, you know, a long rectangle. So I'm walking down, and I'm looking down the side of the house, and the siding is just doing one of these on the side. I'm like, can this really be happening to me right now? Anyway, it's all fixed. I had it all done today. I just, I was not having it. I made a, co a phone call. I said, how fast can you get here? And whatever you, whatever you charge in, just please get it done because we have another storm coming. And the last thing I need is for these things to be all over the place and not where they need to be. So I had all that taken care of today while I was at work. So yeah, you can hear in the cal the rain. <laughs> I was half tempted to not even put them out because of the background noise, but I said, you know what? I'm crunched for time. This is a live cow. Um, I don't pre-plan it. I need to get this done and out to everybody who watches me. So I was dedicated. I posted in my uh, Facebook group, um, just letting everyone know, like, listen, the power's out. The only power I have is on my phone. And I do have two of the videos already on my phone so I'm gonna upload them and fingers crossed everything goes as planned well um, I did the squares cal I'm trying to think the squares cal uploaded finally around 10 30 11 o'clock I think and then the blanket cal didn't roll out until 12 30 1 o'clock in the morning but I was not going to bed until my viewers got what they came to see and so it was released and I'm very proud of that. <laughs> so um, patting myself on the back. All right, so just to give you a brief summary, um, we spun the wheel for the squares cow. We got uh, front post double crochets for the one square and then for the second square, we, we wound up with the iris stitch. So instead of doing a square of all front post double crochets, I said, let me be tasteful about this. So I just did it like that. And I made sure that both sides got it. So it's double sided. And when it gets joined to the other squares, regardless of what side you're using, you can see what stitch was used. So yeah, front post double crochet in every fifth stitch. And then the border um, yeah, just a single crochet, one round. I may go more than one round in the future. I'm just waiting to see what comes up in the future squares. So I'm telling everyone, just do one border for now. If we have to go back and do another border, we'll do that. But for now, just one. And, um, it's, I believe it was 34 stitches across, but not 34 rows up. So a lot of people asked, well, how are you doing the same amount of stitches along the side as you are across the foundation row. And the answer to that is, is that you just put your single crochets in every open space without forcing your needle through. And, you know, don't squeeze the, the stitches too close together because remember it's a square. So the same amount of spaces that your foundation row needed in order to achieve 34 squares can be made possible with the side, so long as you're not forcing your, your single crochets too close together or far apart. So just carefully place your single crochets in the space where it just makes sense and it does, it falls right into place. And if you notice, there's some sort of pattern here. You know, it's not just sporadic, it's, it's a pattern, but, um, it's just a lot easier to tell everyone, like, listen, do your single crochets, 
neatly in a row. Don't space them too far apart as opposed to saying in between this stitch on this row, it's just too confusing. So just do what you need to do, get the 34, um, and if you don't get the 34 by the time you get to the end, just frog it back a little bit and put your stitches a little closer. Um, I think I only frogged back one time, but once I got it, it was fine, okay? And I do know that we have some viewers that are choosing um, not to put borders on their squares, and that is absolutely fine. Um, <clears throat> to each their own. Your participation is more than enough for me. So, yeah. This next one here is the iris stitch. So this one was super fun. It was unexpected because um, to me, this is the double V stitch, but um, I guess what makes it different is the fact that um, I guess it's just how the stitches are, are laid on top of one another. Um, I'm not really sure, but I even verified it in my dictionary which I do refer, I, I refer back to all the time because even though I have the stitches in my head, I wanna make sure that before I present it to the public that I do my homework. So I go in here, I verify what's in my brain, in the book, if it matches, we run with it. If it doesn't match, I educate myself, I practice, and then I get in front of the camera. So there's that. So next week, um, on the 16th of January, Tuesday, uh, I will be rolling out week two. We will be doing two more stitches, and each week we do four squares, okay? So it runs for six weeks, so you'll have 12 squares at the end of this, and then once it's all done, we'll put a border on it and call it a day. So there's that. Now the other side of the cowl is the blanket cowl. So with the blanket cowl, I crocheted myself the center. Um, we didn't spin for that. It's the center that I wanted for the blanket. Something very simple because if you think about it, this blanket's going to be like a stitch sampler. It's going to have all these stitches going out. I mean, six weeks long, minus week one, you're going to have 11 different stitches on this blanket. So why not make the center just as cool, calm, and collected as can be? So I literally did double crochets and then of course I did um, back loop double crochets for the edging now I do have viewers that really do not like doing back post double crochets so what I recommend is to turn your work to the other side and do front post double crochets and then at the end of the row flip it back and you get the same result okay and in the tutorial, I go through stitch counts with you guys just to make sure that you're placing your stitches in the right places in the corners. Um, some rounds only have um, one double crochet, chain one, one double crochet, and then there's some other rounds that have two double crochets, chain two double crochets. So I made sure to be as specific as possible so that way everything matches. Um, and then we spun the wheel and the stitch that we got was the windows. So we just did a couple rows of windows because no one likes a holy blanket. So we did that and then I did one row of just solid double crochets to prep us for next week because we don't know what stitch we're going to end up with. But I definitely think it would only be fair to start next week with a solid foundation um, to work off of. So there's that that is the cow if you're interested check out the videos um, if you're not interested just watch have all the fun with us um, I would greatly appreciate that I do want to add as a final note to the cow portion of my podcast that I received handfuls of emails with stitch suggestions let me tell you I am super stoked about all the emails I'm getting from you guys regarding suggestions for stitches I mean I have reference books like you would not believe. I have dictionaries, I have magazines, I have all the things with different stitches in it. But what I really like is the feedback that I get from you guys. You guys telling me what you would like to see means more to me than stitches in a, in a book. So um, some of the ones that really stuck out to me and ones that I've received repeat requests for um, is cables. The masses want squares with cables, so 
That's one that I'm considering putting on the wheel. Um, another one is the bead stitch. So that's interesting. I know it has texture. Um, it could be all the fun. So there's that. And then recently, um, I received two requests within the same hour uh, for, Kel for the Celtic weave stitch. I just felt it was so coincidental to get the same stitch request within like an hour from two very different people, you know, that probably don't even know each other. Um, I just thought it was so cool. That same stitch, two different people, I need to talk about it. So the Celtic weave stitch is a very fun stitch to work and it's a great idea. So I may be including that on the wheel next week. So keep, keep them coming friends. Um, I take all emails you know i read everything and i take everything into consideration um, because i want you guys as engaged as i am with you guys so there's that okay let me go ahead oh wait a minute i forgot to show you this i'm sorry so um we're, we're talking about stitches and things like that right so a little fun fact about me um you guys know i've been crocheting for a very long time 30 years and through the years I collect these like I make these and they're you know swatch samples and these are different stitches that I've learned and all the things so I've recently been adding to my collection I have 70 of these swatches um, I've added maybe five or 10 to my collection. These two are recent. Um, but I definitely want to share this with you guys and teach you these stitches. I'm sure many of you guys know these already, but I am adding a new thing to my channel for 2024. So it's called the Yarn Addict Stitch Academy. So what that is, is it's a centralized place where I'm putting all of my stitch tutorials for those of you guys who want to learn how to crochet different stitches, um, yeah, my left-handed crocheters need a place to go. You know, I'm not saying I'm the only resource out there, but I'm definitely one of the resources that could be there for you guys. And, you know, while there aren't that many left-handed crocheters, they need a home for their stitches too. So here I am, come find me, the, um, yeah, the Yarn Attic Stitch Academy. And um, of course, right-handed crocheters are welcome too. I do make right-handed tutorials for you guys as well. I figured while you're here seeing my content, why not go into my stitch uh, folder and have all the fun with the different stitches. So it is something that I am launching for 2024. Again, I've been crocheting these swatches forever and now I finally have a place to share them, my channel. So I'm definitely gonna do that. And I look forward to the engagement and the feedback, all the things that you guys have to offer me, please. I read everything. So there's that. Okay, now I can move on to the next part of my podcast. <laughs> so I have, excuse me, sorry about that. I have this bag here. Okay, it was delivered to my P.O. box. I'm super excited to share this with you guys. Ugh, okay. So, I mentioned in the beginning, I was enabled, okay, and I'm a yarn enabler. When there's a deal and a steal, I'm emailing people, I'm calling people, I'm texting people. Go check out Joann's, they have a coupon. Go check this item out, it's on clearance. That's me, okay? And I was working on a project and I happened to flip through you know, some channels and things, and my notifications popped up uh, for Crystal over at Bag of Day Crochet, and she was doing, you know, a yarn share. She was sharing some yarns, and I'm watching, as I always do, and I said to myself, you know what, let me put my work down, and I, let me pay attention to what she's saying, because I'm very interested in, in all the things. She's talking about this yarn, and excuse me, all the things. And I said, okay, by the end of that conversation that she was having with us about those yarns, I was on the website 
and I was ordering. <laughs> Before the video was over, my order was completed. Like, I, I was shopping, listening to her talk about the yarns, and I'm like, I need to have that. Like, how did I not consider this before? Because I'm sorry, but um, this isn't the first time that Crystal's talked about Stenley Yarns. So it's a company um, out of Bulgaria, and she was showing all that fancy, beautiful situations and the colors, and I just, I was dumbstruck by these beautiful colors. And I'm like, I have to order me some. So that's what I did, my friends. And I really hope that this bag has everything I want and more. <laughs> I just, I mean, I, I couldn't even, and listen, I work hard, you know, I treat myself to things every now and then, and as of late, I've been treating myself to some nicer yarns because, um, I deserve it, and I work really hard, so, here we go, I'm sharing some yarn with you guys, <laughs> all right, this is Stenley Yarns. It's from Bulgaria. I believe the website is Pleta. If I can find it, I'll link it to the description box. Um, I, I'll find it. And let me just cut this open. This is so nice. This yarn is so nice, guys. I haven't even taken it out of the bag yet. I'm like, it's nice, it's beautiful, it's all the things. <laughs> okay. So let me just open this up. This is my first time ordering from this company, so forgive me. Um, okay. Wow. Okay. I'm just looking at it really quick. And okay. All right. Should I take everything out of the bag first? Let me do that. Let I don't want to enjoy this yarn until I can see everything that's in this bag. I'm loving what I'm seeing so far, but hold on. Okay. I wound up with seven cakes. And, well, first of all, how cute is this? It's wrapped up like a loaf of bread. <laughs> Oh, look at, look at that. Love that. It's going to go right back on there, friends. I'm literally undoing this just for you guys. Because you guys are amazing and all the things. So this one here, and I'm a little off the cuff here with this because I've never um, touched the yarn. I've never reviewed it, so this feels this feels great. <laughs> this is great. So this is a candy cake, candy, and this is what the inside looks like. Gray, beige, and like an off-white. And I think the words are in Bulgarian. Um, this comes to us from Plotiv, Bulgaria, and it has a phone number on it. This is a number two fine weight yarn. Um, they are recommending a zero to two millimeter crochet hook. And let's see, hand wash to dry, or no, hand wash and lay flat to dry. So there's that. And is there a colorway? What is the color right here? I'm sorry, friends. I'm a little out of my element here. Um, candy. Uh, colorway is number 858. Anyway, I, I, I'm loving this. And it is 100% cotton. 100% soft cotton. It's 280 grams, um, 900 meters. This is so great. I love the colorway too. So my thought process behind these were, what could I make with these for me that could also be good for anybody, like unisex? It's not 
you know, just for men. It's not, you know, but something that I can wear that, you know, I would feel really good in because I really like toned down colors. I mean, I like all colors. More recently, my newest addiction is the pink. It's a thing. Um, I'm learning to like it. So I just wanted something a little more. I know this is the wrong word, but more masculine and not so, um, that's not even the right word. I just want something that fits me, you know? So, yeah, I think I can make something, I don't know what yet, but I can make something that would go with my vibe, but then also could go with something that someone else can wear and it be interpreted in a way that they like it for them, so... For lack of better words, I do apologize. Because um, I, I have learned that when a content creator puts out tutorials, it's always best to make sure it's as versatile as possible. You know, but sometimes I like to buy things that lean towards one side than the other, not always in the center. And so that's what this is for me. Okay, next. I have this here, it's called Souffle. Let me go ahead and open that. I'm loving that string. It's like tinsel. Like, here's a present. It's Christmas. <laughs> this is, the color number is 364. And we have, like, lavender. And it goes into, like, this uh, midnight blue. And it's got all the things. Look at that. How nice. So this here is 85% cotton, 15% polyester. It's 280 grams at 900 meters. The color number is 364. And let's see. Yeah, hand wash and you can dry in permanent press. And the recommended hook size is number one to number three. So that is cool. One millimeter to three millimeter hook. So I think four millimeter is a G. So three millimeter is an F. I think if you used a four millimeter hook, it would be like very drapey. Um, I know people who use number two yarns and use a four millimeter hook. So I wouldn't see that as being a problem. And by the way, I'm in love with this this colorway here. Um, the lavender going into that deep blue. I don't know what I would make with it. I'll figure it out and we'll go from there. Okay, this next one is a vegan cake. Vegan cake. So let me go ahead and open this up for you guys. There we go. And I love the fact that they have a start tab on all these. Um, so this here is deep purple going into a bright red. Love that. Love it. This is 20% polyester and 80% cotton. It's 250 grams at 1,200 meters. And what's the weight? I bet you. What is this? doesn't say it looks like a number two yeah it's it's a number two um, the recommended hook size is a 1.5 to 2 millimeter crochet hook maybe it's a one it doesn't say my friends if it's a one or a two but I love that colorway I love it you know it would be cool if I could make like a like a springtime scarf to go like with a decent outfit um i don't know you can make tons of things with this stuff yep okay so there's that okay so the next thing i have here is what is this called a muffin magic drop now 
One thing I didn't notice on the website that I'm noticing now is this has some Lorex in it. Wow. Okay, I'm just soaking this in. Okay, yep, so it's 80% acrylic, 20% Lorex. It's giving me all the reds. We love a good red. Isn't that awesome? Now, I didn't realize it had as much Lorex as it does, and that's okay. I just know this, whatever I make with this would not be for me. So I would probably be gifting this to somebody, um, whether it be a completed project or otherwise. But this is um, 350 grams at 1,100 meters. And the recommended hook size is a three millimeter to a five millimeter crochet hook. And it's hand wash and permanent press to dry. And the one thing that I just noticed about this is that there's, there's um, multiple plies here, it looks. Okay, so it's not twisted. So it's all loose like that. And I think as you work the product or as you work the yarn, you kind of have to make sure that you have everything together as you're working it. These usually come with a key. This one does not, which is fine. I'm sure other ones have keys that I could work this up with. But yeah, Stanley, colorway, no, well, it doesn't say, but it's Muffin Magic Drops. I don't see a colorway number. 198057. Anyway, there's that. Okay. This next one here is, what is this one here? This is a Stenley Merino Cake 1000. And this one is, this one here looks like it is sealed shut. But I'm gonna take it out anyway because I want you guys to see all the things. Now this looks like it's not um, wound like the other one. I love how tightly wrapped this is, by the way. Look at that, it feels amazing. But So clearly it's not wound, but that's okay. Look at those colors. Wow. Okay, let me put that down for a second and fix this. Okay, so let me get my situation. Okay, so this here is 50% Australian baby merino, 50% fine acrylic fibers. It's 300 grams at a thousand meters. And the recommended hook size is a 2.5 to a 4 millimeter crochet hook. It is hand wash and uh, dry on permanent press. Merino Cake 1000. How awesome is that, my friends? So, just going to slide that back on the cake like that. Two more to go. <laughs> Let me just sit that down. Okay. This next one I'm super excited about. It was one of the first ones that I ordered when I went onto the site as Crystal was talking to us about all the things. This is another souffle cake. Let me just roll this in a ball. Okay, look at this. Can you not even yellow into a red, into a black? This is so good and it's so soft. To me, anyway, it's soft. This is 85% cotton, 50% polyester. It's 280 grams at 900 meters. And the colorway number is 180. Souffle. And this is uh, 
it recommends a one to a three millimeter crochet hook. This is so cool. I love the colors in this. I can't wait to start working with this. So cool. This next one here I got, it was right next to the one that I just showed you. Let me go ahead and open this puppy up. <laughs> it's another souffle cake. Look at that. It's like a yellow into like a gray blue, a blue gray into like a navy. So cool. Again, it's 85% cotton, 15% 15 polyester, 280 grams at 900 meters. And the recommended hook size is a one to a three millimeter crochet hook. So cool. The color number is 182. Now, prices. So these are in euros. Um, and it looks like on the invoice, the only one, I got two of them on a discount because they were like clearance. It was the Merino cake, which is this one. So in euros, um, original price was 1586. This was discounted at 1190 euros. I'm not, I'm not good at the conversions, but just put it in your mind, I got a discount on that. And the next one that I got a discount on, um, actually, that was the only one. Okay, so this one was the only one that I got a discount on. I thought I saw a second one. That's okay. These other ones here, the vegan cake, this one here, came uh, to $9.12 in euros. And this one here, this Muffin Magic was $13.52. And the Soufflés came to $9.59. You had that one there. And this one here. I like both of these equally. They're amazing. Love it. And then these ones here were $9.12. So there's that. So I will tell you that the, the shipping cost more than the actual yarns. Um, but that was to be understood. Like I knew that from the get-go. Like Bulgaria is a long, far distance away and I, I totally get it, but this is a once in a lifetime purchase, maybe not once in a lifetime. I wanna work with them first. And if they're as good as I think they're going to be, I may be a repeat customer for sure, for sure. I may not be ordering as often as I do my loops and threads, but every now and then, every now and then I may treat myself to a cake or two. So there's that, okay? So last but not least to our video today, I want to share happy mail with you guys. Now, I know when I do happy mail, there's always like, sometimes there's this like big pomp and circumstance with like a big box and things, but sometimes I get literal mail and it just brightens my day. And in today's video, my friends, today's happy mail is just an envelope with a letter in it. And yeah. So I'm not gonna share the person's address. Obviously I'm gonna cover it up, but it's got a beautiful cake, little cupcake on the front. I thought that was amazing. That's my PO box, friends. <laughs> and on the back, there's stickers and all the things. So I have two letters in here, one that I can read on camera and one that is just for me. So this comes to us from Lisa. Lisa D. Um, it says, one, I am a yarn addict too. I am a 55 year old grandma to 15 grands. The holiday season is on us. I'm making scarves for the, the grands. I love watching your show. I always missed your live, but I do wish, uh, I do watch them later. Merry Christmas to you and your mom. Love to you both, Lisa. 
So thank you so much for this, this mail. Um, it comes with two letters, which I'll be honest with you, like to me, getting a handwritten letter, and I said this before, but getting a handwritten letter from somebody like a perfect stranger is like getting away from technology and going to walk out on the grass. Like just, it's like a breath of fresh air sometimes. And I feel like we all could benefit from that every now and then. So when I do get letters like this, I, I do imagine myself just taking a break from the grind and just enjoying the letter. Um, yeah, just something about someone's like handwriting. It doesn't have to be amazing, perfect or anything, as long as I can read it. But, you know, taking that time to write a letter to somebody that you're just starting to get to know is absolutely amazing to me. So, Lisa, thank you so much for the happy mail. It did brighten my day. <laughs> um, and I look forward to mail like this. Um, it doesn't always have to be like a package of something or this or that. Just a little, hey, how you doing? You know, this is my day. This is what I'm, you know, this is what I'm working on and all the things. So I really enjoy things like that. So thank you so much, Lisa, again, for the happy mail. These little happy mails are just as humongous as the boxes I get. So thanks. So my friends, that wraps up today's video. If you enjoyed this as much as I did, please hit the like button, subscribe to my channel if you haven't already, watch some other videos, and if I'm your vibe, subscribe. And then last but not least, hit that notification bell to stay updated with everything regarding me and my channel. So until the next time, guys, take care. Bye-bye.